In this video, we are going to discuss how to attack the opponent when the king is in the center. Today, we are going to discuss the second part, which is how to attack when the opponent's king is still in the center. And we are going to discuss five critical diagrams that can help you to improve your game. I don't want to waste any further time. This video is going to be extremely critical to watch if you want to improve your chess level skill. So let's quickly jump into the video. Okay, so we have the first position on our board. We are playing with the white pieces and here black simply played the move bishop to a6. Simply putting the bishop on a diagonal where the bishop is hitting the rook. Perhaps it looks like a good good move because the bishop on b7 was completely bad. But putting the bishop on a6 seems like a good move. So after rook e1, I want all of you guys to pause the video and try to think is this position good for black, good for white or what is happening if bishop a6 was a good move, bad move. Just try to evaluate the position and then try to resume the video. Okay, so all of those who think that bishop a6 is a good move, sadly the bishop a6 is a bad move in this particular position. The answer is pretty clear. After rook e1, it looks like definitely black got this move with a tempo, developing the bishop, putting the bishop on a nice, nice square. But guys, at the same hand, the king is still in the center and the rook on the same file as the king is not a good idea definitely. After rook e1, my idea is pretty clear. For example, if you play some random move, I want to play the move bishop to g5, hitting the queen as well as a check and I'm simply going to win the game. So everyone is like, okay, fine, let's play the move bishop to e7, simply blocking the check and now I want a short castle. What's the problem? Now I'm going to play the move bishop to c5, double attacking the bishop, you can't castle. You play the move rook b7, defending the bishop, I play the move knight to d4. The idea is pretty clear. I want to capture on c6, hitting the bishop and the queen. And still you can't really castle because if you try to castle, for example in this position if you try to castle, I'm going to simply capture the pawn on c6, followed by the bishop. And we are simply going to win the game. So after knight d4, black plays the move queen to c8 which is the only move in order to protect the pawn and also trying to cover the f5 square because my idea is also to play the move knight f5, putting more pressure on the bishop. After queen c8, white is simply going to play the move queen, c8, uh, queen to f3. And now the idea is still the same. I want to play the move knight to f5, triple attacking the bishop, and now black can't really do much. If black tries to do, if for example, if black tries to play a move like king f8, trying to move the king, I can simply capture the bishop. Takes and now rook to, G, rook to e1, bringing all pieces into the game. It's a double attack, knight f5 is coming in, the king is still pinned, and you can't do much. It's losing for black. So this is what happens if black goes for king f8. If something like g6, trying to cover the f5 square, it's not going to work. Queen to f6, you can't capture the queen because the bishop is pinned up. I'm attacking the bishop, triple attack, and also hanging the rook. So the com position is completely lost. So this was the first diagram you can learn by how keeping the king in in the center is a very bad idea. So if your opponent plays something like this, you can already sense the bishop a6 is a very bad move. How should black try to continue in the position? He should have first went for the move bishop a7 and after rook e1, he can simply castle. So that after short castle, there is uh, no bishop c5. And now after short castle, once you castle, then definitely you can play the move bishop a6, which is definitely a good move. But all it depends upon the position you are playing in. If, you're, if the king is still in the center, trying to play a move like bishop a6 is not a good idea. So this is how you can punish your opponent, make a serious attack when the opponent's king is still in the center. So this was the first diagram, so now let's move on to the second diagram. So coming on to the second diagram, we have this position on our board. We are playing with the white pieces and now I want all of you guys to pause the video and try to think, if you are playing with the white, uh, white pieces, what are you going to play with the white pieces? Okay, so definitely the opponent's king is in the center. So if you found the move, e5, simple, simply opening of the center whenever your opponent's king is in the center. So e5, very strong move, simply hitting the knight and the pawn. If black captures the pawn, we simply capture the pawn with the rook, giving a check. Bishop to e7 and now simply bishop a3, getting maximum pieces into the game. Double attacking on the bishop, you can defend if you want by playing knight g8, but simply queen e2. Triple attacking and even rookie one is coming up. You are simply going to be a piece down and eventually white is going to win the game. 
So this is what happens if black captures the pawn. Black is having more options as well. If black plays knight g4, trying to remove the bishop, uh, knight, we can simply capture the pawn, give a check, king to d8, and now simply h3. Keeping the knight and now playing the move bishop to g5. And you won't realize, but the position is already lost for black. The king is in the center, the king can never castle in the future now. Now knight to e4 is coming up, queen f3, trying to get the another rook to g1. The possession is completely lost for black. It's already plus 5 for white. So this is how you can simply attack whenever the opponent's king is in the center and you are and your king is extremely safe by, via short castling. So always try to find an opportunity in order to open up the possession. E5 should be a move that comes come into your mind subconsciously. It should be an instant reaction. Like your pieces are all lined up, so let's try to open up the possession if your king opponent's king is still in the center. You simply play the move e5 and the position is completely lost for black. So this was the second position you must know. Try to open up the position if your opponent's king is in the center. So now let's move on to the third diagram. So now coming on to the third diagram, we have this particular position on our board. We are again playing with the white pieces and I want all of you guys to pause the video and try to think how are you going to continue in this position if you are playing with the white pieces. Okay, so this position was already very insane. I found it very interesting to be true and if you really found this answer, answer of this problem, kudos to you if you found the move d5. First of all, let's try to discuss the, what is happening in the position. For example, white king is extremely safe. White is having 7 pawns, black is having 7 pawns, so equal material balance. But the point here is black king is definitely not safe. You can't do a long castle because the rook is already moved up. King side pawn structure, not so good. If he does a short castle in the future, still there are going to be problems in the future. But for now, the opponent's king is still in the center. So why not try to open up the position? We have our queen and the rook lined up on the king. So why not try to open up the position? So if you found the move d5, which is an extremely strong move, I'm simply impressed. After d5, if black is, white, black is having three options, either to capture the pawn, either to push the pawn, or either to just leave the thing as, as it is. First of all, if black captures the pawn, we push the pawn to e4. If black captures the pawn again, we capture the pawn again with the knight. And here we are simply hitting the bishop. And if the bishop moves, we can simply play the move knight to d6 check, followed by queen d8, queen e8, and the game is over. So after knight into e4, black is forced to capture the knight. Queen takes and the possession is lost. The king d8, queen e8 is a mate. You can't move the knight because the knight is already pinned up. So bishop e7 is the only move, but I can simply capture the bishop, it's over. And if you play the move queen g5, simply bishop f4, that's it. Exchanging the queen, force exchange, and now uh, it's a check. You move the bishop, I can play the move rook d1. Double attack. If you defend the knight somehow, bishop d6 now. Now what are you going to do with the bishop? It's completely lost. That is the problem. Even when the queens have been traded, the king is facing so much trouble because all the pieces we have is on the game. Is in the game. And black is completely lost. So this is what happens if black goes for trading everything. So now let's go back and try to think if black doesn't capture the pawn and go for playing the move d4 in this position. We are going to play the move e5, again trying to open up the center as fast as possible. Now black is having two options to either capture with the queen or the pawn. If he captures with the queen, trying to trade off the queens, we can simply play the move queen to f1. Hitting the queen and the king. The queen can't move because the king is hanging. So it's eventually black is losing, going to lose the queen and eventually the game. So here if black captures with the pawn, we play the move knight to c4. Hitting the bishop as well as the pawn. Black pushes the pawn. And here we simply play the move queen into e5, check. Again, black can't capture with the queen with the knight because the knight is pinned up. So queen takes is a fourth move. Rook into check, king to d8. If no bishop comes in between, knight to d6, check. And black loses the rook simultaneously. So king to d8, but now comes the move rook to g5, double attacking on the knight. And after rook to c7, Simply bishop f4, developing the piece, kicking the rook, and now knight e5. A triple attack, and you can't do much. Black is again losing the material, and it's game over for black. So this is what happens if black goes for playing the move d4 in this position. 
So now let's try to discuss what happens if at the place of capturing the pawn, black goes for pushing of the pawn. After pushing of the pawn, white is simply going to play the move e4. And white is extremely happy because, first of all, white is having more space in the center. White is having the pa a deep connected path pawn. The f5 square and the c4 square is the most juiciest square for the knight. Maybe knight c4 or maybe knight f3, knight h4 or where um, the destiny is f5. And white is already very comfortable in the position. So this is what, exactly what happens if black goes for pushing up the pawn. If black goes for playing the move bishop to g6 going back with the bishop, simply playing the move e4, trying to open up the position, pushing up the pawns in the center because the opponent's king is still in the center. Bishop d6, knight to c4, trying to get a bishop. And here the position is already lost. It doesn't matter what you, what you do. Uh, but I can simply capture the bishop or I can simply keep my knight over here. And if tries to play some anything else, like bishop into h to check, simply king h1, you go back with the bishop, I can play the move d6, f6, you can already sense how bad black's position is. Rook d1, not developing the bishop to h6, getting the pieces in, into the game, black is already lost, it's game over. So this is exactly how we can simply cl crush black by simply opening up the position via d5. This is how such strong move is d5. So if you found this move, kudos to you. So this was the third diagram, very essential one. If you found the move, simply amazing. So now let's move on to the fourth diagram of the day. Coming on to the fourth diagram, we have this particular position on the board. So it's basically a combination of every chess knowledge you have. So we are play again playing with this position as white. So I want all of you guys to pause the video and try to think, how are you going to continue this position if you are playing with the white pieces? Okay, so as I said in the, in the start that this position is a combination of complete chess knowledge. So first of all, if you think that c4 is a move, like simply op trying to opening up the position because the opponent's king is in center, it's not a good idea because black can simply capture the pawn, giving a check and also capturing the knight simultaneously. So c4 is bad. If you found the move queen a4 check, definitely it looks like one of the most natural moves, giving check, starting with a check. But nothing is happening, black is going to play knight c6, or maybe knight d7. Nothing is happening, black is extremely fun. But if you found the move rook to b1, hitting the queen, it's a good move. First we are removing this queen from the, from the attacking the pawn, and once the queen moves, now we are going to play the move c4, trying to open up the center. Bishop goes back, bishop to b4, again attacking the queen, and most importantly, now covering the f8 square so that play can never go into castle in the future. Queen move, and now comes the move d5, again trying to open up the position. Pawn takes, rook to e1. d5 is a move which is an extremely strong move, as I said, and as I'm going to say in the future as well, that always try to open up the position whenever your opponent's king is in the center, and this position, black can't really castle, so it is the best idea to open up the center. E D5, and it looks like what we think here is after E D5, let's try to capture the pawn. But guys, it's not a good idea because here Black can capture with the queen, and you are losing your advantage. But playing Rook E1, simply developing the piece sacrifice. Knight to D7, we simply capture the bishop and play the move Bishop D3 check, and the game is over. Black can't really castle, and nothing is left. Black is forced to give up the queen, and eventually the game. So if black goes for playing the move d4, pushing up the pawn, simple, simply moving the bishop. And now we are going to move the knight on the next move, maybe simply capturing the bishop, knight to g6, the game is over. It's a check. If it's square is covered, you can't really castle in the future. The game is already over for black. So this is how you can simply win this game. Just whenever you are attacking, whenever the open skin is in the center, don't think about the material. Try to think about the position. Try to go for the king because in the end of the day, you just need to checkmate your opponent by checkmating the king. So sacrifice is a thing which is extremely important and we are going to cover that chapter in the next video. So yeah, this is how you can simply crush the black in this particular position via keeping the opponent's king is in the center and trying to open up the center. So this was the fourth diagram, very critical. So now let's move on to the final diagram of the day, the fifth diagram. Okay, so we have this 
particular position on a board, the fifth diagram on a board, we are playing with the black pieces in the position. And now again, I want all of you guys to pause the video and try to think, how are you going to continue this position? Okay, so something has been changed. Opponent's team is, is pretty safe after short casting. Definitely, our punch structure is extremely strong. But one thing is, our king is the one which is in the center. So uh, should we try to castle in the possession? No guys, it's a bad idea. But everyone who found the move king to d7, simply kudos to you. All those who found the king d7, they got this idea that the center is extremely close job. So there is 0% probability that the center is going to open up. So whenever the center is close, keeping the king in the center can be a very good idea. So if you found the move king d7, definitely an idea could be to play the move queen d7, doing a long castle and trying to bring the pieces into the game. But can't I simply play the move king d7? And now my idea is to play the move queen g8, queen g7 and now simply bringing the pieces. So I'm simply saving the move. And my king is pretty safe in the center because white can't really open up the center in the upcoming future because of this particular pawn chain. So whenever the center is closed up via, via this pawn structure, you can always think of such ideas by keeping the, your king in the center because this is the particular area that where the king is going to be the safest. I don't think that white's king in on the by doing a short castle is pretty pretty safe because black is going to open up the king side on the next move. Whereas white can't really open up the center in the upcoming future. So the position is already pretty good for black in the position. Queen g8, queen g7, rook g8, and black is winning the game. Practically speaking up. So this is how you can even use this king in the center theme in your advantage whenever the center is closed. So yeah, this, this was the, these were the five critical diagrams that can help you to improve your game trying to attack your opponent king. So if it helped you to improve your knowledge and skill, make sure to like the video, share this video with everyone and make sure to subscribe to our channel because on the next video, in the next video, we are going to discuss how to do a, how to do a hundred percent accurate sacrifice whenever you are making an attack on your opponent king because sacrifice are the things that are very essential whenever you are doing an attack in your opponent's king. So I'm going to see you soon. So till then, stay tuned. And now keep watching One Shot Chess.